space coconut. Okay, so today we'll be talking about hex perks and how they rank in usefulness in a match. This is, of course, only my opinion, so feel free to take it as the whole truth if you don't want to think for yourselves. Before I get into it, I want to encourage you to fulfill your duty to the YouTube algorithm. Our data overlords are quite disappointed with us, and I would like to avoid another week in the mind control... I mean the enrichment center. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helps us all become better human beings. Now that you've been enriched, let's talk about the best and worst hex perks in Dead by Daylight. First, in last place, is the newest hex perk, Retribution. Hex Retribution says, A hex that lashes out upon its destruction. Those who cross you will be punished. Any survivor who cleanses a dull totem will suffer from the oblivious status effect for 45 seconds. If any hex totem is cleansed, including this one, the auras of all survivors are revealed for 10 seconds. This basically means that if you run this hex perk by itself, a hex that can be removed, a perk that the devs say is powerful enough to be a hex perk, a perk that has been deemed high risk, high reward by its status of even being a hex perk, your high reward will be 45 seconds of the oblivious status effect for each of four dull totems and 10 seconds, 10 whole seconds of aura reading when the totem is broken. If a survivor breaks a dull totem, they can't hear your terror radius. This is okay, but in order to sneak up on a survivor, it helps if you can tell where they are. Without any kind of tracking for you when a survivor cleanses a dull totem, you'll still be doing your own thing and they'll have a minor inconvenience for 45 seconds. When a survivor cleanses a live totem, you get 10 seconds of aura reading. The exact same effect as Bitter Murmur, a non-hex totem. This hex perk was obviously designed to work with other hex perks. So rather than losing one perk slot for any other hex perk, you're choosing to lose two so you can at the very minimum have 10 seconds of aura reading when a survivor cleanses a hex totem. Due to its role to provide a punishment to survivors who cleanse totems rather than being a good perk on its own, Hex Retribution gets to be the worst hex perk in the game, since it's necessary to run another hex perk, forcing the player to have two perks by the end of the match for what will most likely be a disappointing sacrifice. Number 7 on our list of things that disappoint us is Hex, the third seal. It says, a hex that hinders one's aura reading ability. Hitting a survivor with a basic attack while the hex totem is active applies the blindness status effect. This effect applies to the last four survivors hit. While the blindness status effect can be pretty debilitating in various situations for survivors, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Thanks to comms and situational awareness, survivors can still live a long and healthy life while they repair gens and run loops. Unfortunately, thanks to the M1 requirement to inflict blindness on each survivor, it's possible that the hex will be cleansed before any or even one survivor has been affected by the status effect. You could use this perk all by itself, and it could help you to a greater degree in a match than Retribution could. Number 6 is Thrill of the Hunt. A hex rooting its power on hope. The false hope of survivors fills you with excitement and strengthens your totems. For each dull totem and hex totem remaining on the map, gain a token. Gain 10% more blood points for actions in the hunter category for each token. Survivor's cleansing speed is reduced by 6% for each token. Gain a notification when someone starts working on a hex totem. Now, I actually like this perk since it should be a staple in all hex builds. It'll help you find survivors who try to diddle your totems. Unfortunately, this makes its use limited to builds that have multiple hex perks similar to Retribution. The reason I put it here at 6 is because by itself it slows down survivors trying to cleanse dull totems. While that doesn't help the killer find survivors, it does have an effect on them that's still beneficial to the killer, even though it's minuscule. Number 5. Hex Huntress Lullaby. A hex rooting its power in despair. Your hunt is an irresistible song of dread which muddles your prey's attention. Survivors receive a 6% regression penalty when missing any skill check. 
Each time a survivor is hooked, Huntress Lullaby grows in power. One to four tokens in time between the skill check warning sound and the skill check become shorter. At five tokens, there is no skill check warning. Huntress Lullaby was a highly anticipated perk when the effect was revealed. When the PTB dropped, we all released a collective groan when we found out that it was a hex perk. It's nice to know the disappointment when finding out something is a hex perk hasn't changed. The interesting thing about this perk is that even though it hinders survivors, it doesn't exactly do it in a boring way. Since it attacks skill checks, it drives survivors to find the totem if they can't hit those skill checks without warning. While the effect is similar to that of Ruin, its effectiveness is very limited in the same way the third seal is. Nothing happens unless the killer hooks survivors, with the effect gaining strength as more survivors are hooked. But this requires time, and it's entirely possible that the totem can be cleansed before any effect is felt by survivors, let alone an effect strong enough to impact gameplay. The hex warning survivors get in the UI can also drive them to look for the totem before anyone gets hooked as well. So in the end, this has more risk than reward. Now that we're out of the realm of useless perks, on to the land of mediocre ones. Coming in at number 4 is everyone's favorite victim of dev balance, Hex Ruin. It says, a hex that affects all survivor generator repair progress. Whenever a generator is not being repaired by a survivor, it will immediately and automatically regress its repair progress at 200% of the normal regression speed. Hex Ruin affects all generators. Thankfully, this perk doesn't require any other perks to be useful. It doesn't require you to hit or hook other survivors to give them the effect. Unfortunately, you have to have a way to easily and consistently chase survivors off gens in order for it to work. Don't let the 200% number fool you, though. The regression ruin causes is half as fast as a survivor can repair it. This means that any progress lost due to ruin is still gained pretty easily, although the regression is still much better than simply kicking the gen. Hex ruin can still work well enough to be used. It just requires a bit of planning, a mobile killer, and a build that can get survivors off gens and keep them off effectively. Number three is Hex Devour Hope. A hex rooting its power on hope. The false hope of survivors ignites your hunger. When a survivor is rescued from a hook at least 24 meters away, Devour Hope receives a token. At two tokens, gain a 5% haste status effect 10 seconds after hooking a survivor for a duration of 10 seconds. At three tokens, survivors suffer from the exposed status effect. The five tokens grants the ability to kill survivors by your own hand. While Devour Hope suffers from the same problem that Huntress Lullaby does, that is needing to hook survivors in order to get the effect, the effect and devastation it can bring to the survivor team is very fun to play with. And unlike Huntress Lullaby, Devour Hope stays hidden until it's too late. The second token will give the killer an inconsequential speed boost after hooking a survivor, mitigating any hint that you're up to something. Once you get the third token, they're all in danger of being downed. They'll all go on a mad dash to find the totem, which shifts their focus away from generators, which can buy you enough time to eliminate a survivor or two. While you can choose to defend the totem, it's sometimes not advisable to do so. It might be a better choice to take out survivors or regress gens in this case while you have the time. This all depends on the current game state and your current build. This is the only hex perk that can impact the match in such a dramatic, dynamic, and fun way. Number two is Hex Haunted Grounds. It says two trapped hex totems will spawn in the trial. When one of the two trapped hex totems is cleansed by a survivor, all survivors suffer from the exposed status effect for 60 seconds. The remaining trapped hex totem immediately becomes a dull totem. Now, I know what you're thinking. But space, Haunted Grounds doesn't do anything, and then only lasts for a minute. Well, here's my take on it. Yes, Haunted Grounds does absolutely nothing unless a survivor cleanses it, and there's no telling where you'll be when it goes off. But a minute of the exposed status effect for any killer is pretty powerful. Depending on your loadout, you could manage to down all four survivors in that time if they're not careful, and you're either very good or very lucky. As Hag, I've managed this a few times when the totem is broken mid-match, when I have traps set up around the map everywhere, 
and it can be very fun to pull off even if you'll end up with a brutal victory afterwards. Yes, it's possible for the hex to go off and you don't actually get to capitalize on it. However, unlike most other hexes, it activates when it's cleansed, instead of being deactivated. You are guaranteed 60 seconds of the exposed status effect, no matter what. If any other hex totem, other than retribution, is cleansed, its effect is deactivated immediately, with a high possibility that you didn't gain any benefit from it. This 60 second guarantee of a powerful effect is what makes Haunted Grounds good and worthy of the number 2 spot in this extremely prestigious tier list. Now of course, if you can count like I can, we come to number 1. Surprising no one is the most reviled and hated of Hexperks by the delicate mayflies of Dead by Daylight. No one escapes death. It says, a hex rooting its power on hope. You are animated by the power of your hex totem when the survivors are on the verge of escaping. Once the exegates are powered, if there is a dull totem remaining on the map, this hex is applied to it. While hex no one escapes death is active, survivors suffer from the exposed status effect and your movement speed is increased by 4%. Now, it's very easy to say that Noed is the number one pick just because it counters the current gen rush meta that we're currently stuck in, which it is. But how about an even more compelling reason? In order to deactivate Noed, a survivor has to cleanse the totem. By this time, it's the end game, and there's a limited amount of time to do anything for anyone, including looking for this totem. But thanks to predictable totem spawns, experienced survivors are going to have no problem with this task. No, the reason this perk is number one is because in order to prevent its activation, survivors have to cleanse all five dull totems on the map not just the active one when the gens are completed. This will do one of two things. It'll either create much needed time for the killer to play the match when survivors hunt totems, or allow killers to catch up if survivors ignore totems and focus on gens instead. This is the biggest reason why a killer should run Noed in the current meta. Survivors and some killers alike will try to call you bad for using such a crutch perk. They'll say all sorts of things to guilt you into playing the game they want you to, so you lose to survivors and other killers can call you bad. But let me put what they say into perspective. I just spent the last six months converting the text from thousands of endgame chat entries and various threads about Noed into one compressed wave sound file, and the audio amazed me. This is what it sounded like. This is what a player who complains about Noed sounds like in one form or another. Don't take what they say about Noed or you or your playstyle to heart. Put a hook through theirs instead. <laughs> I hope you found this list informative and entertaining. Do you think the perks belong in different ranks than I listed here? Do you have a funny story involving any of these perks? Do you want to tell me how wrong you are about Noed so we can all laugh at you? Let me know in the comments below. Like, share this video to help the channel grow like a fungus, subscribe to please the algorithms, follow me on Twitter for updates on future videos and streams, but for now, give me some space.